There was just a peanut jar in the front and you threw in five bucks. Usually in sports, if you suck, nobody talks to you. But in climbing, if you suck, people talk to you more. That, yeah, that's exactly my experience. Good friend Peter Stancato the third. Yes. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, that's Stancato. right. Stancato the third. Um, I actually did a little bit of Facebook research before this. I just wanted to see like when did we actually meet and I had to make sure that I was correct. We met at a pickup volleyball game. That's right. At Kent State University. Yeah, um, Tri Towers area. Tri Towers area. Three like three or four days before school started. Or yeah. something like real close to that. Like the week for freshmen to mingle. Yeah, yes. And while everyone was on their phone or listening to music, um, my brother, I, I made my younger brother, he wasn't even at Kent State at the time, come around with me and we were just playing volleyball. We had a pickup game yeah. and Peter's like, I wanna join, can I be on your team? <laughs> I was like, absolutely. I wish everyone had that, I guess, outgoing, I don't know, like willingness to do something yeah. or to participate. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So I guess the whole reason for these episodes and what I'm doing, and just for like people to get to know you, the community, everything, is that I feel so lucky to have grown my business, even just a little bit, like sure. very little bit. But we, I'm constantly surrounded and motivated by these like <clears throat> active and healthy people. So, I mean, obviously we're sitting at the rock gym that <laughs> Peter built. <laughs> yeah, and, you did too. And well... <laughs> To, to gather that group of volunteers to help. And I was just talking to a couple friends a little bit ago, but that speaks a lot to a person. Yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of active and healthy lifestyle and being able to like mix that into your life, because mm. everyone's trying to find a balance of, sure. oh, I work too much and this is it's too hard, I can't go to the gym or anything like that. What does active and healthy, like how do you balance that in your life mm. and what does that actually mean to you like what does doing something mean to you sure intentionality Intention. so intentionally blocking out time awesome. my day looks like um, I get up really early I usually get up at 4 a.m. and I try to work from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. before my kids wake up and then the kids wake up at 8 and I watch them till 12 <laughs> and then my father-in-law comes over to watch them the rest of the day and I get to the gym at 12 and usually I'm here until 6 and then I go back home for family time. Yeah. We have dinner at 6.30 and then we put the kids down at 8 and then Amanda and I watch The Office awesome. and then go to bed. Awesome. So um, the active part of my life is whenever I'm here at the gym. Yeah. I try to work early. Um, like so right whenever we open because people usually aren't here and I try to work until 5 and then maybe from 5 to 6 my last hour that I'm here awesome. I try to climb with people because that's when customers are usually here yeah. so I intentionally try to block out the beginning time to get all the minutia done and then the last hour I try to use the best use of my time yeah. and climb while people are awesome. here awesome and speaking of minutia, or like the little things that need done, yeah. I walked in one day just to climb, and Peter's on the floor, on his knees, hands and knees, scrubbing off. What are you doing? He's yeah. sitting in the floor. Yeah. Um, that's so, me. I'm so, just yeah, that's a one-man show right now. It's an awesome thing to see people <clears throat> and to hear you even say, what, a, a couple years ago? Mm -hmm. I think, I'm thinking about building a rock gym. And yeah. I said, you know, are you serious? In Lakewood? Yeah. Um, so you, you are a pretty community-driven mm. person and obviously family-driven person. Yeah. How, is that, how does that tie into like what you want to do with this gym? Like your purpose, the mission, all of that. You know, there's... Totally. We want to reinvent rock climbing. Typically in a rock gym, people get intimidated um, and they either don't come back or they become a try-hard. So they'll keep coming back but then they carry that staunch personality with them yeah. and then it becomes maybe an elitist community <clears throat> where there's just pockets of really good people and then they keep newcomers at an arm's distance. Rock climbing is one of those sports where um, 
they can easily eat their young. So it's tough. <laughs> it's really tough to yeah. kind of break in. Or there's some gyms. Um, or maybe you'll go with a group of friends so you're kind of already in a group where it's a welcoming feeling from the start. And that was my experience. Awesome. And that was my experience here for sure. Really? Very much so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. How? So speak of... I guess the first time you rock climb or second or like how did you get introduced to it? Sure. It was seven years ago awesome. um, in November 2011. My wife was invited to be a bridesmaid at a wedding. <laughs> she knew everybody. I knew nobody. She was a bridesmaid and I was the plus one. So on the morning of the wedding, she went to be with the girls to get done up and have champagne and get dressed. And the groom felt bad for me. He said, how about you come climbing with my groomsmen and I? And so they invited me to this gym that was in a garage. There was just a peanut jar in the front and you threw in five bucks. That's it. And you got shoes and there was plywood and mattresses. And usually in sports, if you suck, nobody talks to you. But in climbing, if you suck, people talk to you more. That, yeah, that's exactly my experience. Yeah. In rock, in <clears throat> rock climbing in general, but specifically here yes um yeah they're like some of the most encouraging individuals that are involved with the thing for sure and uh yeah i used to play softball and basketball and like you struck out get off the you know yeah. like, you're, yeah. not, you're not really welcome here or at least you don't feel like it exactly yeah um so that <laughs> that was my experience it was like a 10 out of a 10 yeah and so i've never seen an activity like that where i I climbed with strangers and then we had our own handshake by the end of it. So I fell in love and wrote a business plan and saved up money for seven years so yeah. we can start. <laughs> but it was just one of those good groups. I mean, like I said, if you aren't good at climbing, people will talk to you either in a positive way or a non-positive way. Yeah. And it was just a positive way for me. Awesome. Um, can you talk about the, the 100 date nights? Yeah. The, or like more specifically with the community, but like, you know, they're welcome from anywhere, any state, mm -hmm. but talk, talk about that. And then about like the activity involved with, and it's not always like a hundred percent beautiful relationship, but just retaining a positive relationship. Of course. Yeah. Sure. So we're a nonprofit. We're required to have a vision, mission, and goal. Okay. So our vision and mission can be the same every year, <laughs> but our goal has to change every year. So for 2018, our first year, we wanted to do a hundred date nights because it's just a goal that directly speaks to our mission. We want to improve relationships. And I found that climbing is great for that. Mm -hmm. So I figured, why not do 100 date nights for the year of 2018, take a Polaroid picture of each date, because if you don't take a picture, it didn't happen. So we just posted <laughs> yeah, every Polaroid didn't. on the wall. But it's cool. You always see people like looking at the pictures. Yes. And it just shows like all that we've done. Yeah. Like my friend today, he told me he was proud of me. And he said, have you been able to just sit back and just appreciate what, what's happened so far? And I said, no, I am going so fast. Yeah. I haven't. Yes. And um, I'm like, when can we just get a beer and like sit in the woods and just yeah. talk yeah. and just, you know, be grateful for what's happened? So um, those pictures like show me what what this gym has done let you take a moment to yeah. see it um that's really awesome can you do you bring your you bring your family i've seen them in here before yeah what do you hope to accomplish to sort of teach your kid you have two little ones mm -hmm. correct um amanda's awesome i've met her by the way and what do you guys hope to sort of instill in them sure and they you're not I'm guessing you're not like, they have to be excellent rock climbers when they grow they up. They do have to be excellent rock but climbers. But having, having a gym for, like, this is a, a playground. It's an yeah. adult playground. Yeah. It's a kid's playground. Yeah. I've seen birthday parties run in around here. Yeah. Um, and that's that, I guess that's that sort of uniqueness about here, about yes. Nosotros, that's like, well, maybe they'll be told not to run around at some other places mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. Totally. But can you can you kind of... Talk about, like, what do you want to instill in your kids about the healthy, active, I mean, rock climbing or not, but... Totally. Um, I hope to instill... Um, i trying to think. So the word is outgoing. I want them to learn to be outgoing awesome. at this gym. 
Awesome. I think that climbing is one of those activities where you can speak life into somebody. Where literally a climber's on a wall, they're on a spotlight, they either succeed or they fail. It's black or it's white. And then after that happens, all the bystanders can either say, great job, or they can ignore them, they can stink eye them, they could dog them, anything. And so I want them to reach out and to be a light to new people, people they know and people they don't. I mean, what I've learned is that it's all about meeting people and to have a positive impact. The same way we met each other at a volleyball game. <laughs> definitely you being outgoing. That was I like mean, the key, that was the only key thing. And Well, the point was, I just had a goal in college to meet one person a day. And like... I mean, it's just, it's a scary goal, but it's helpful because years down the line, I mean, that was 2006 we're talking about. Yes, yes. So 12 years later, now we're both helping each other. And so it helps. Yeah. Like, it helps to meet people and to be good to them. That's awesome. So, and then one of the things I wanted to bring up again was, you know, you say like, yes, I built it, but I had help. Yeah. Um. And I think everyone chipping in just a little bit, which I was, I was witness of. I, had, I have footage of that too. We could probably be real somewhere in between here, but coming here and seeing like, first of all, it was just gutted mm. and you, you built a rock climbing gym mm. companies that have either like built it before or, you know, they have like budgets and yeah. this and something to work with. I know you said you started saving up for, yeah. But having those people volunteer here, to me, and this is, this is like a no doubt thing, is that that speaks completely to you. Mm-hmm. When you were like, yeah, I'm so, I'm so surprised, you know, 25 people came to help tonight. And like, I'm not surprised. <laughs> no way. Yeah. They came to help you and obviously to be a part of it. But there's something, there is a light in someone that shines and people are attracted to it. Well, there's a couple of things. I prayed a ton and people came and also people saw how desperate I was (laughs) and they felt bad for me. And that's why they came back because I mean, like there were nights where we had to pull an all nighter because we had to get the ceiling done because we only had the paint gun for two days rental. And so we had to be ready and people were like, if I don't come back, he's going to be screwed. Yeah. And so that also True. happened. But you're right. I mean, we, we transformed this basement. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, you have been filming, sort of documenting. I guess you're a, what do you call it, documentarian or something? Yeah. Um, um, like a, you're a film guy yourself. Yeah. So do you enjoy sort of the documenting process? And yes. what do you hope to do with that in the future? So much. I literally have a awesome. four-page to-do list, single space, <laughs> with ideas I have. Somebody said because we're in a church, we should um, have a video of baptizing a baby and climbing chalk. So it's <laughs> oh like crazy gosh. ideas like that. Yeah. We need to do more backstories because we haven't finished 2017. We haven't done 2018. Yeah. And backstories are your like recap. Moments. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, I love video. Yeah. and. It's, it's winning. It's like the best medium today. It's better than, in my opinion, it's better than writing down journalism. It's better than pictures. People are most moved by video. Yeah. And so if, if I had it my way, I could make one video a day for 365 days a year, but it takes so long for me to edit. Mm. I wish I can outsource it, but it costs so much money. Yeah. And the, yeah. Let me clear up some schedule time. That's, yeah, that would be awesome. That's that's right. And um, and I think with like tiny little bits of technology, it's getting better. Right. Like we can, you know, yes. do it on a phone. Or but you know, things still take a while. I think in the future it's going to be pretty seamless. Hopefully. Or we'll just have those like little drones following us around. That would like, be incredible. Look at me over here. Look, film me Seriously. over here. Seriously. I mean, I'm resorting. Like I'm about to just do like live stuff. Yeah. Because it just doesn't require editing. Yeah, and it's just authentic. I mean, at a certain point, we don't need the super high. Like our phones and everything are good enough. Mm. We don't need like the high resolution. I'd probably actually opt for not the high resolution. Yeah. But mm. it's it's really neat to me to think about. So your kids are how old? 
One and two. One and two. They're going to be 20 and 30. Looking yeah. back on the videos that you took of That's true. building this wall. That's true. The T-nuts that you slammed in the back of it. Yeah. The stuff that, you know, like all of the things that you guys did. That's and I just true. think, man, if my parents had stuff like that. We have yeah. a couple things of when we were like starting skiing. From DHS. And it was just four falls and then the thing goes like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn. <laughs> That's, that's nothing awesome. to post. That's nothing to repost anywhere. But thank you for saying that. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I I totally didn't even think about that. Yeah, but and that's is it crazy because we're gonna have, I mean, better resolution or something in the future. But yeah. it's just gonna keep getting better. You're totally right. So um, I guess 2019 goals. We'll talk about just for a little bit, sure. and then we'll kind of wrap it up and then cool. spit this out. But pe- yeah, people love watching people. Yes. And they also like hearing stories because what yeah. I've found is that there, like, there's lessons you can learn, but man, there's, there's so much other good knowledge that even just the conversation can spit out. Of course. And a lot of those times, like, yeah, you're at the bar or just hanging out and you're like, oh, someone could have just recorded this conversation. I know. I know. <laughs> this is so good. And then not that you forget everything, but you kind of forget little things along the way. Yeah. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about some 2019 goals. What you want Lakewood to know? What cool. you want Cleveland to know? Cool. Or I mean, any state for that matter, or awesome. city or state for that matter. Yeah, that sounds great. 2019 goals. Um, we are going to add a television to the gym. Sweet. Oh, <laughs> because, sweet. Because I want to have movie you can nights. Can climb and watch movies. <laughs> yeah, I want to do movie nights. Uh, we're going to add a bridge feature awesome. to our cave where people are going to be able to climb up and out. Um, cool. I want to save for another location. Awesome. Um, I'm either going to uh, move to a, another city um, or I was thinking about testing a market by first building an outdoor portable gym. There's one huh. called the Nomad Block in Quebec, Canada, and they literally... Um, welded a climbing gym onto a trailer and they have a legit gym set up and it's great because you're able to go to a city into an open area test the market see if there's a need and an interest and if there is then you can rent a space that's awesome and hopefully continue to replicate that so mobile as well yeah something that could travel yeah so kind of three ideas either the mobile thing on the trailer or just a new space or a new space with a climbing gym on the roof because uh the summer is the slowest time for gyms yeah and so it'd be cool to offer something outside yeah because typically people only climb outside in the summer and there's really nothing to climb outside on the west side interesting because the um, Rocky River Metro Parks isn't there yet. Yeah. That's something else I want to talk to, who I need to talk to to start that up. Yeah, awesome. So that's and what I'm doing. I'm sure our conversation just about other things too could last forever. Yeah. But um, I wanted to thank you and thanks to whoever's watching. Of course. It's been an awesome time and I will continue to hang out here. Any last parting words or... Thanks for being a founding father <laughs> or a founding mother. I mean, <laughs> seriously, you... you <laughs> All right. Oh, very, yeah, very good. Cool.